I'm going to do it my way, God says, go ahead. But there's no faith in that. I'm not trusting anything except myself. But we have to learn to say, you know what? Whatever it happens, I will, I, will, I will make a plan for the day. But as the day goes on, and God gives us a chance to witness, there's two boys that are staying with her trying to help her get it back on her feet. And they were just amazed that anybody would come out and just fix the door for nothing. They, just could, they were like that. They couldn't believe that. One of them 19, one of them's 18. And I'm really anticipating the boys being a youth this Tuesday. Yes. yes. See, God gives us opportunities. Through our plans are not his plans. My ways are not your ways. So as we begin to walk just in faith, all right, Lord, here we go. This is what I got planned out for the day, but I know this is not the way you're going to do it. But it's, you're going to get me in the places that I need to be so that you can do what you're going to do. And if I'm, I'm just walking in faith, okay, this is how it turns out. This is how it works. All of a sudden, there's a peace that you have that you don't get frustrated. The panic doesn't ever kick in because God's in control. I'm letting God drive the ball. We have to begin to exercise, begin to work that because faith is like a muscle. If you never use it, it doesn't get any stronger. And if we realize that we're already using it every day, learn to recognize our use of it and learn to trust it like we trust uh, mechanical things, and learn to trust our faith and learn to trust God and he begins to, we begin to see God act in our faith, our faith will get stronger and we will have the faith that can move mountains in our life we'll have the faith where there's no panic in our life, we'll have the faith that says whatever comes my way I'm prepared for not because I knew it was coming but because I have faith in the one that brought it my way a lot of big tragedies come, there's a lot of people down there in South Texas that are dealing with some, some pretty major problems it's not uncommon to that area. This is not the first time it has rained 12 or 14 inches in Austin, Texas. It has done it before. I have seen it begin to rain. I have left Beaumont, Texas, headed west, and that's about a 40 minute drive from Beaumont to Houston. And it began to rain when I leave Beaumont. When I get to Houston, you cannot go through the underpasses because it rains so hard. This is not uncommon in that area. They have done this before. It's not fun, it's not exciting, it's a lot of water, and it comes fast, and it all goes right back in the ocean. But it's a trying time. We went and watched that movie last night, or yesterday afternoon, All Saints, about a church, All Saints Church, uh, back east. It's, a, it's an amazing story of how a church, uh, the, a new pastor, felt led by God to do something to help save this church that was dying. And, and, and so they, they went through this whole process, and I'm not going to tell the story because I want you to go see the movie. But... They went through the whole process, and at the end, their whole process didn't work out the way they thought it should. They had a plan, and it looked good, and it was going to work, and they had all the confirmation. It was going to work. You would be able to save the church, and it all fell apart at the end. But because of the effort, and because of what they did, and continuing to stay in it, and continue to walk in faith, this church got restored, and is still there today, and it's five times as big as it's ever been. God did. Walking in faith. I know the, 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 the pastor's wife, she said, at the beginning of the whole deal, she said, are you sure this is God telling you to do this, or are you doing this? He said, I'm sure that God told you. Then go do it. If you're sure that God told you, then go do it. Because he wants to show you how strong your faith can be. He wants to show you, if you'll just walk in faith and trust him, and you're sure that it's him, that he's got a big plan. A mountain plan on a little bit of faith. A huge plan, huge impact out of a little bitty thing. A little bit of faith has a huge impact on your life. Begin to use it, begin to exercise it, begin to let it be part of what you do daily. Let's go to Matthew 13. 31 and 32. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is, be great, it is the greatest among herbs, and become of the tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. But you've got to plant it. He doesn't say he had a, a grain of mustard seed in his pocket, he walked around rubbing it all the time. He planted it. You've got to plant it in your life. You've got to begin to let it grow. You've got to begin to, to, to nurture it and begin to use it and begin to let it get bigger and bigger. Your faith is like that tree to where it sustains other things. 
a little bitty thing in your Christian, your spiritual life, and your relationship with Jesus has a huge impact. If we begin to take care of it, we begin to use it, and we begin to practice it, we begin to rely on it. You know, I've, I've shared many times, and, and, he, and he, God has not stopped doing it, and I'm guessing He never will. When I'm going somewhere, you'll say, you need to turn left. I'm not going that way. You need to turn left. Okay. I, I, anymore, I don't, even, I don't even question. And sometimes he just takes me in a circle for no reason at all. To my knowledge. <laughs> just to see if I'll turn left. Just to see if I'll trust my faith. Turn left. Okay. How far am I going? I don't know. I'll tell you when to turn right. Well, I'll tell you when to turn left. And he'll take me just a little circle or maybe a big circle to drive the, the day before yesterday. We go all the way to town. Just <laughs> Don't know why. But there was a reason. If it's, if it's nothing more than teaching me to hear the voice and respond to it, that quick. Because sometimes that quick is what it takes. Sometimes that quick we have an opportunity to share the gospel. We need to be responsive. We need to trust our faith. I know for whatever reason that we went that way and we did those things, it was for a reason. If not, nothing on that day for the next day or the day after the day after when he calls on me to trust my faith, to, to hear that little voice and to respond to it, that just word, the working of your faith. The working of your faith brings everything into light. It brings our life into a peaceful, a peaceable, loving place that we just understand completely that God is in control. And I'm trusting him. But see, we have to believe. That's the, that's the key. We have to believe that my faith will be the determining factor. My faith is just as important as the gauge on those railroad tracks and the flanges on those wheels. My faith is just as important as the quality of the tires on my car. If it's going to work, I've got to, I've got to take care of it. I've got to begin to nurture it. I've got to make sure I'm looking out after it. It's got to be firm. It's got to be constant. Let's go to James chapter 1. I love reading this scripture, and sometimes I just pick it up and just read it because I need to. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve. This, is, this, this lets me know that he's talking to me. This lets me know that James is writing this for all the world, for always to ever read and to always take a grasp of. James, a servant of God, of the Lord of Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. See, if you don't have any faith, those temptations and those things are going to, there's not going to bring joy to your life. But he says, count it all joy when you fall into these temptations, knowing this is the trying, knowing that this is the trying of your faith. Work at patience. But that patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. See, a lot of times when this panic comes, when this lack of faith comes, it's because we're wanting something. <clears throat> we're needing something to happen. We're wanting something to change. And, and, and James says, look, know this. When these temptations come, when things come along that seem disarray, know that God is working on your patience. And this patience, this faith is what he's working on. That you don't need anything. He, he will provide all your wants. If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And God giveth all men, liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now here's the key, here's the clincher right here. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea and, the, and with the wind and tossed. Now listen, to, this, is, this, is, this is where we don't, where we don't want to be. Because he says in verse 7, The wavereth man, the, wind, the man that waves, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. To waver. The word waver. To waver means to lose strength, determination, or purpose. See, we're praying, we're asking God, well, I don't think God's going to do anything. I've lost, I've lost my purpose. I've lost my determination. I've lost all that I had. I lost my faith. Because I didn't believe. I didn't believe that I prayed it, and however it happens, I know that's what God's doing. However it turns out, I can praise Him, and I can have joy, and I can have peace, because my faith is in, He is the one who's in control. He's the one who's in charge. He's the one that does it all. Now let's go to Hebrews 11, verse 6. Verse 
But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're going to have faith, you have to believe. You have to believe when you're going to sit in that chair, it's not going to fall, and you'll have faith in it. You have to believe that when you pray and ask God that He's going to do His will, His good will for your life. You have to believe that, and in that you'll have the joy and the peace, and your faith will become strong. <laughs> and then whatever happens, however which way, wherever which way it goes, it's the way it goes. I counseled with a couple this last weekend, and they don't know what to do, and they don't know where to go, and they don't know, and they don't know, and they don't know. And I said, "Who have you asked?" <laughs> well, we asked everybody. Yeah. yeah, that's a real good plan right there. Yes. Pray and ask God. And wherever He tells you to go, if pray and ask about it, ask Him to confirm it. And when He has confirmed it, because He will, then just go there. Because that's where He needs you to be. And if we operate outside of that, then He's going to say, okay, I told you where to go, and I told you where I need you. You can operate there, or you can operate where you're at. What are you going to do? Sometimes it's not opinion. Sometimes it's not... And, and, and what is amazing is well, while I was counseling, they had made mention that they had thought of going to New Mexico. Well, it was good, but, but we just didn't want to do that. Well, there's a whole world full of people out there that God has said, you know what, I can use you here, or I can do this with you. <laughs> no, that's, that's, not, that's really not what we want to do. I'm going to stay right here. What's that, what's that old saying? Misery loves company? <laughs> You can stay there in your misery. You can stay there. I don't know what God's doing in my life. Well, God's wondering what you're doing in your life. Where's your faith? All right, God, what do you want me to do? See, He wants us to surrender that that our own will to Him. Lord, I want to do a lot of things, and and I want to be this, and I want to be that. But that's just what I want, and I'm really not very smart. See, we got to get to that place and realize it. This is right. I really don't know a whole lot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Most of the time I'm wrong. Yes. yes. <laughs> when we get to that place and we realize that, yep, most of the time I am wrong. Lord, pretty much all the time I'm wrong. But where do you want me to be? Because where I am, where, if I am where you want me to be, then guess what? Everything is right. Everything is right if I'm just where you want me to be, not where I want. Doing what you want me to do, not what I want to do. I went to change the door. He said, no, you're not going to change the door. You're going to fix this one. Okay. He has equipped me for both. I want to go do this. I get over there. No, I don't want you to do that. Okay. But you have to be able to listen. You have to believe that he's speaking to you. Believe that the voice that you hear is God. Because it is God. We've just not gotten used to hearing it. We've got not gotten used to responding to it. Turn left. No, I don't go that way. I'm going to turn right. Okay. Now I come to tell you something important. No, I don't do that. See, God wants you to be responsive to his voice. No matter where, no matter when, no matter how, no matter what. Boom. Yes, sir. You know, and, and we do that. In the military, you're taught a command is a command and you cannot go against it. You respond to it immediately. You don't question it. Have you seen that new commercial for, I think it's for Geico, have you seen it? <laughs> uh, an officer gives a, 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 a private a command and he goes, well, what's in it for me? <laughs> You're not allowed to do that in the army. <laughs> but see, that's what we do with God. I want you to move over there. Now, that ain't going to work. You've got to come up with a better plan. He goes, well, the plan that I have is already perfect. If you'll just follow it. If you'll just trust me, if you'll just learn to trust me as much as you trust that chair, I'll show you things you can't even believe will happen. I will give you a peace and a joy and a comfort that is, surpasses even your understanding. That's what he wants to do in your life. He can move mountains in your life with a little bit of faith. Little bitty things have a huge impact. Let it have an impact on your life. Let it be the thing that, that makes a change. In your life. I'm going to, I'm going to play, pray, I'm going to believe it, and I'm not going to question it. And however it turns out, I know I prayed and I trust the one that I prayed to. Yep. That he will do the best what's for me. It's not about where I am or what I'm doing. Lord, you just you just put me where you want me and use me the way you want me to use me. And I'll be happy to be there, and I'll be happy to do it. Because your plan is perfect, and it's always going to be perfect. 
and I want to be there. I want to be there. I want to have that faith as a grain of mustard seed. But I'm going to plant it in my heart. I'm going to plant it in my life. I'm going to begin to let it work. I'm going to begin to nurture it. I'm going to begin to make it grow so that I can, I can have all that God has for me. That patience, that perfect patience. Okay, Lord, this is where we are. This is where we're going. This is what we're going to do today. And there's been plenty of days that I had it all planned out to be home by 10 or 11 o'clock. And when I went at 5, 30, 6 o'clock, it's like, praise the Lord. He did a lot of things today. And I got to be there. I got to watch God do things. I got to walk with him. I got to be there with him. So maybe tomorrow, maybe, I don't know. Tomorrow you here yet. When I wake up in the morning, okay, Lord, here I am for another day. Praise the Lord. It, it, it makes us so much more anxious to go home with him. When we realize this is so temporal. This is so little. This is so not, this is so not my home. I have a home with the one that provides for me every day. And when I get the work done here, he's going to take me home. So I'm going to be about what he wants me to do. Remember when Jesus said, it's time for me to be about my father's business? It's time for the church to be about the father's business. Let's get our work done and go home. Amen? Let's get our work done and go home. we got a couple of songs we're going to close with. Thanks if you come up. Amen. Let that mustard seed of faith in your life. Let it begin to grow. Am I getting a little stretchy? I need a new value. All right.